This is KGW News at Sunrise. Coming up this morning, four shootings in Portland killed two people and injured two others this weekend. What authorities know so far, plus. In over 10 years, he never had a single complaint with us and, and the best of the best get complaints. So that says something. Remembering one of their own, radio cab drivers pay tribute to the fellow driver who was stabbed to death in his cab earlier this month. We'll take you back to this weekend's celebration of his life in just a few minutes. And it was rainy, but hundreds of families turned out for the annual Autism Walk at Oaks Park. How this event builds community awareness and empowers people who are on the spectrum. All right, before we check in with Rod Hill for the first time, in this five o'clock hour, we take a live look outside. This is uh, Eric Patterson's shot this morning. He's looking at the Fremont Bridge there. So uh, the Fremont and Markham Bridges, both getting worked on throughout the night last night, both expected to reopen at five o'clock this morning. Do you see traffic moving there? Yes, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're in good shape here on a Monday morning. But again, that uh, closure that happened last night is coming back next week Saturday into Sunday so uh, or pardon me Sunday into Monday so we'll have more updates on that as we move through the day here on sunrise I almost forgot the Markham is my commute into KGW and I turned one away I'm like oops nope got to go at alternate route hey yeah. good Monday morning hope you had a wonderful weekend how are we looking as we uh, begin the work week uh, today's it you know the last uh, day in, until possibly Sunday of next week that we'll see any rain whatsoever here's the radar this morning so same cool weather pattern for today it all changes tomorrow Tuesday so that timing has not changed if you haven't uh, seen a weather forecast over the weekend. We have a mix of rain and snow over the Cascades. It's snow at about 3,500 feet. Rain over the coast range. Uh, Longview has been getting some showers. Portland Salem has actually been kind of dry for the past hour or so. Clouds over the city. We're at 49 degrees. Showers this morning. Fewer showers this afternoon. And then once we get into this evening, I think the shower chance will quickly end. Again, 49 right now, 51 at noon. I have today's high temperature at 59 degrees. Back to you. All right, more from Rod coming up here shortly, but right now our top story this morning. Another violent weekend in the Portland area with four separate shootings. Two people were killed and two others were injured, including a 17-year-old boy. Blair Best has more on what police know about these crimes. Images of a crime scene have become all too common here in the Rose City, and this weekend was no exception, with two people dying in shootings, marking 25 homicides in Portland this year. The first happened early Saturday morning around 2. Police responded to a shooting inside an affordable housing complex in the Cully neighborhood in northeast Portland. When they got there, they found a man dead. His identity has not been released since it's early in the investigation and no one has been arrested. Around 10.30 Sunday morning, another deadly shooting, this time inside a business on Southeast Foster Road. When police got there, they found one person dead. There are very few details about this case and police continue to investigate. In Hillsboro, a 17-year-old boy was shot at the Washington County Fairgrounds Sports Complex Saturday around 5 p.m. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Two people are now in custody. They're 17 and 15 years old. Police are still investigating what led up to the shooting, but say there is no threat to the public. And Washington County deputies are looking for this man who is accused of attempting to kill a woman. 43-year-old Glenn Hornsby Jr. tried to rob a woman, fired a gun at her, and then when she tried to drive off, he chased her and shot at her again. Now this was Friday evening on Northwest Dogwood Street in the Cedar Mill area. The woman was hit once in the chest. She was taken to the hospital, treated and released. Deputies say they found Hornsby's car in Hillsborough and consider him him to be armed and dangerous. Now anyone with information on any of these cases is asked to contact their local police department. Meanwhile, Portland Police's focused intervention team continues to remove illegal guns from the streets. They captured this one Saturday evening from a reckless driver around Southeast 92nd and Division. That driver was taken to jail. As for the gun, police are checking to see if it's connected to any shootings. Blair Best, KGW News. 
Also making headlines this morning, dozens of people gathered Saturday to pay tribute to a radio cab driver who authorities say was murdered by a passenger inside his cab earlier this month. 43 year old Reese Lawhon drove a taxi for radio cab for more than a decade. To honor him, fellow drivers organized a memorial drive through Portland. There's a lot of anger, a lot of just not able to understand why this happened. Um, and there's no putting the pieces together to figure this one out. Uh, there just isn't. Court documents say Lawhon picked up murder suspect Moses Lopez back on April 8th. Police say Lopez stabbed Lawhon from the back seat over confusion about Lopez's destination. Lawhon died at the scene. Lopez was arrested and has since pleaded not guilty to second degree murder. Other headlines we're tracking for you this morning. The Marion County Sheriff's Office is looking for this inmate who walked away from the County Transition Center. 36 year old Eugene Guajardo left on Friday just after 8 p.m. He's 5'8 and weighs about 165 pounds. He was in custody for a parole violation. If you see him, you're asked to call the non-emergency dispatch line. Also in Marion County, a man will be arraigned today accused of driving under the influence and crashing his car on Lancaster Drive Northeast. This happened Saturday night just before 11 o'clock. Deputies say they found 20-year-old Fernando Guzman and a 15-year-old boy in the car. The teenager is in critical condition this morning. Witnesses say another passenger ran off before deputies arrived. Also this morning, Shake Shack is opening its first Portland location. It's on West Burnside across from Powell's Books. Some people showed up for the soft launch yesterday. Oregon's only other location is out in Cedar Hills. Mayor Ted Wheeler is expected to attend a ribbon cutting ceremony at the restaurant later this morning. Doors open at 1030. And that's a look at some of your Monday headlines. The city of Salem unveiled its plans for the cannery, a 13 acre waterfront property that developers hope will become a community friendly destination. That's a bit of a change for an area that's been in the business of food processing for more than a century. And the plan has always been eventually that that would become a mixed use, multifamily, uh, commercial retail community space. The bigger picture and the end goal here is to not just put Salem on the map, but to pay homage to our past and to embrace it. So the plan includes more than 370 new apartments and more than 14,000 square feet of commercial space for shopping and dining there along the Willamette. That looks like it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic as well later this week to be out yeah. about walking around. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm assuming farmers are excited about the fields drying out. There's a point you, you need the mud to go away a little bit right. so you can get the tractor in the field. <laughs> and uh, the rest of us, a lot of people looking forward to a run of sunny days. Here's a look at uh, what we have not done yet and what we will start to do this week finally. Uh, we showed you this last week, but this is the big topic right now. Average first 7 degree temperature is April 2nd. We haven't done it yet. Latest in the season ever to hit 70, May 5th of 1967. Normal high this week, 64. The record range, by the way, is 82 to 90. And the record, the lowest record of the week is Friday's record, which is 82. And I'm forecasting 82, um, which is almost hard to fathom. That's going to feel super warm <laughs> because we're simply not used to being warm to state the obvious. I put my yellow lines here to point out the what I call a moisture break out in the Pacific. So today is it. Once these showers fizzle out later today, which they will, will go dry. It looks like at this point all the way through at least Saturday. Now there are some light showers up uh, around outside of uh, Wenatchee and Yakima. We've had some showers out around Baker City. Snow level up in the Cascades this morning, 3,500 to 4,000 feet. Timberline has actually picked up four inches of uh, fresh powder. Ski balls picked up a couple this coming weekend will be ski bowls last weekend of winter season operations, by the way. Uh, Longview, good morning. You've got some showers passing, but so far it's been pretty dry in Portland over the last uh, couple of hours. Future cast, this is 8 o'clock this morning. 
Doesn't show a ton of rain, but some scattered showers this morning into this afternoon. Here we are at 4 p.m. Once the sun starts to go down this evening, the rain, look at this, 8 o'clock. The rain chance quickly ends, and then we'll be dry overnight. Some cloudiness potentially in the morning. Otherwise, there's your sunshine uh, building tomorrow. Here are the temperatures you're starting with on this Monday morning. 45 in Salem, we have clouds, so temperatures are comfortable. 46 out in the Dows, it's well above freezing out east as well. 38 in John Day and Burns. And here come those seven day numbers, 59 today, mostly sunny 66 tomorrow. By the way, it was 66 Saturday afternoon, if you think back. And then Wednesday, something we haven't done yet, but we will do it Wednesday, 74, 77, maybe 80 as soon as Thursday. Then right now, 82 Friday, 80 Saturday. Models differ in whether or not we get a cold front coming on Sunday or Monday, but when that next front arrives, temperatures will go back down and we'll see some showers. But by back down, I've got 65. That's still pretty gosh darn nice. That's your forecast for now. Thank you, Rod. It's for us. You know, it's not about us, it's for us. She's talking about the annual Autism Walk. Coming up this morning, how this event helps people with autism find community and acceptance.